We'll okay. get you saving saving time. New products, new parts on my data. Okay. Let's do this thing. First up, this is actually a 12 foot by 8 foot spaceship. No. Okay. It's a button. This is a button, and this is a. It's because it's actually called a flashlight button often, and it's a tactile button that alternates on and off. When you press it once, it connects those two pins together, and when you uh, press it again, it disconnects them. But it's nice because it's a pushy button, not a slide switch. Usually, uh, you get these, you use a slide switch for this. Can handle, like, I think, like a half an amp at 12 volts or so. So it's really great for just projects on a breadboard where you just want to, like, press, press. Um, we have the. Uh, the momentary buttons in the store, but they're like not as elegant as this, I think. So I, I like this. I like okay. this button a lot. We we'll also demo have, it. Um, I mean, basically, uh, almost a, the same. A one. similar version. This one is three pins. When it's off, all three are disconnected. When you push the button, all three of them are connected. So it's similar, but it's like a three-way triangle yeah. connection, oh. a Y, a Y connection. So this and is, that, I think, single pole. That's a quarter. Yeah. It's on a quarter. That's a question. It's yeah. small. Yeah. It's tiny. Smallish. Okay. Yeah, it, fits, it fits on a breadboard. Except. Okay. Ready? What's this? Oh, this is a P channel power MOSFET. We have the N channel power MOSFET already in the store. P channel power MOSFET, not used as often. P channel MOSFETs uh, are, you know, they're a little tougher to use because they're uh, minority carriers, not majority carriers. I think that's the. I think that's. Or is it transistors? It. Anyways, it, it's, it's harder to pass a lot of electrons through it. Um, and so they're not preferred as much as N-channel, which is a lot stronger. But there are situations where you need a P-channel MOSFET. Sometimes you just need a P-channel MOSFET. And uh, if we have them, there's a couple projects here and there that use them. And uh, we wanted to have something that matches the N-channel in our store. If you have to control a lot of current, we, th we think you should probably go with an N-channel. But if, you're, uh, if there's something in your circuit that makes it difficult to use an end channel because of the polarity or because you have to reference power instead of ground, uh, check out uh, this P-channel FET. It's fine. You can definitely uh, source uh, like at least, I think, 30 amps. You can put a heat sink on it. Very low RDS on. I think it's like 70 milliamps. But it's still higher than an end channel, which usually has 10 milliamps. Yeah. Better uh, to milli have a FET. Milli-ohms. Better to have milli a FET and not need it, they need a FET and not have it. That's right. So my grandpa used to say. 70, 70 milli-ohms of our DS on. But uh, again, okay. if you need it, we have it. Next up, look at this beautiful LED. Look at this, just look at it. Ooh, it's purple. Just look at it. Okay. Yes. Um, here's a bunch of moth. Yeah. <laughs> Boring. Yeah, we have to take photos of it like that. Okay. But this, yes, it's this, a clear lens. Photo, yeah. It's a purple LED. This is a UV LED. We actually got a bunch of these to test the UV sensor that I put in the store a while ago. And then I was like, you know what? Uh, this would be kind of handy to have in the store as well. Yeah. Uh, so it's a UV LED. And it's not uh, true UV because, of course, human eyes cannot see UV. So why is it purple? Well, you're seeing it's a wider range than just UV. It does emit UV, but it also emits a lot into the purple range, um, the violet range. Mm -hmm. So I can just show it off. Oh. What do you want to do? What maybe, do you want to, where, 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 maybe where? in the overhead? We can the overhead? Just, okay. Maybe we'll see. I might have to turn off the, the main light to just show yeah, it. Yeah, let's see. Okay. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's not so bad. So, yeah, it's a purple LED. And then, hold on, I will uh, turn this off so we can see it a little bit better. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a purple LED. It's kind of a narrow beam. Um, you know, if you have stuff that is glow in the dark, uh, this or photo, photo uh, not photoresistive. Not photoreactive, whatever. That other thing where it absorbs light and emits a uh, different kind of light, uh, photoreactive. Uh, you can use UV light to um, activate it, uh, but we're here with glow in the dark stuff, you know, like basically black light in LED. Um, sometimes they're used for like uh, detecting uh, currency, like there's UV reactive strips and currency, and so this would let you see it, or if there's like hidden messages with UV ink or whatever. So, um, UV LED, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty straightforward. It uh, comes in a pack of 10. Okay. Uh, Ford voltage is about 3.5 volts, but you can run off a coin battery. It's just not terribly bright. Right. Works great with fluorescent materials as well. Really makes them, like, pop if you have, like, fluorescent plastic. I was at a project right. with fluorescent plastic and edge lit it with UV, and it, like, was super, super cool looking. Next up, we have, I think, besides you, two stars of the show um, tonight. Uh, pink sequins. LEDs, these are awesome. This is a long time coming. They're finally here. We have them. 
I know we had all the other sequins and we were waiting. We kept a bunch of the PCBs because um, we knew that we would have these pink sequin LEDs. And Those again, there's actually no such thing as a uh, pink LED, but however, it is a, a reddish, purplish LED. And it's a purple... Rose, perhaps? It's rose pink, but it, sorry, it's a, it's a white LED with phosphor on it that makes it pink. And I will uh, show it off. It has, has a little bit of a pink rose glow. It's not like a magenta pink like my hair. It's more of like a softer pink because it is a white with phosphor. And I can show it on the overhead how big. So these are very teeny little guys. And I'll light this one up. So it's like a pinkish color. And then I'll turn this on so you can see the full. PCB. And these PCBs come in a little strip and you can uh, pull them off. It's always hard to get uh, pink and red color to show up on um, a camera. But it's a kind of a rose pink color. What do you think? Bubblegum pink? Kind yeah. of like a bubblegum pink color. Yeah. But uh, it's a nice addition. We already have a bunch of other colors. Okay. And so then now I think. They, and we ship them like this? Yeah, they are shipped on a strip and then we have a nice uh, photo, I think, of Becky's hands. Yeah. Uh, can you uh, just go forward? Yeah, sure. Too? Yeah. Uh, this is uh, Becky's hand, so you can see you just snap it apart, and uh, you can uh, snap each LED off. It's just easier for us to ship them this way. They're tested all at once. They're manufactured in strips of five. You get five in every package. Uh, you know, just snap them off. They're very easy, and that way it's actually you don't lose them in between. Okay. Um, next up. Okay. We're going to go to NeoPixels. Breadboard edition. Yeah. That's right. You asked for them, folks. They're here. They're finally here. We got yeah, them. Yeah, this was a long time coming. We actually had a lot of samples, but um, finally, the factory that makes uh, the NeoPixel LEDs is like, hey, we have 8 millimeter uh, through hole, and um, in the future, also 5 millimeter, but those, the 5 millimeter ones, aren't ready yet, so there's no ET on those. We will have them eventually, though. Uh, NeoPixel, so these are NeoPixel chips that are inside of uh, yeah. a through hole LED and they're 8mm LED and I have a lovely photo of them yeah. and here's them hooked up so you just plug them into a breadboard you can cut the leads there's four leads data in data out ground and power and here you go so just uh, there's no data sheet for them because it's uh, that's how it goes sometimes but that's <laughs> the flat <laughs> no it's the flat it's basically like a NeoPixel it's, a, it's the same chip except instead of in a flat LED, it's in a round LED. And it's diffused, so we can't show the chip inside, but there's a little, there's a little mini black chip times inside. Times, that's how it goes. You're, in life, you will not always get a data sheet. Like in, you, in life, you, uh, you will not always get a data sheet. Yeah, but you can always reverse engineer. Um, Anyone who tells you otherwise is trying to sell you something. Do you want to try yeah, to, yeah, 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 sure. Show them the All right. So it looks like okay, so here it is with the lights on, so you can see the wiring. So um, when you wire them up, uh, you know, there's data in and then power and ground. So I just have power and ground for each LED. And then what I did is when I put them in the breadboard, I had the data in is on the left and then the data out kicks the data in of the next one. So that's why they're all chained up together. Uh, and then they're just driven from a, a, a trinket here. I'll just remove the wires I was using before. And then actually I'm using this uh, button to turn off the power, which is kind of handy. You can see it's still flickering because there's a little bit of power that leaks into the data inlines, but um, so that's what the power switch is like. Yeah. And I'll turn it off so you can see more colorful yeah. effects. So the nice thing about this is, first off, they're through hole, so you can use uh, you know any PCB breadboard. Uh, they're very very easy to use. Um, the uh, the light is very diffuse. It's very soft. Uh, yep. You can see it from you know almost any angle. It has like you know much wider range of looking because it's a fully like diffused uh, LED. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, uh, it works with the new pixel code pretty well, no problems. Uh, it's trade-offs. Trade-offs? The only thing is it's not as bright. They're, bread, they're on a breadboard. You're not just going to like, you know, good, run a strip of these. But they, but they are not as bright as the individual LEDs because it's more diffused. The light is, is, is yeah. over a larger area and so they're not as pinpoint bright as the... the In person they look like candy and I want to eat them. Okay. They do look very candy-like. So if a quick question someone has yeah. about these. I'd like to build the LED drum, but want to wire it so it can be turned on all at once remotely. Can these be wired to an alternating current source to make this happen? Well, you'd need a regulator to do that, but um, you know, if you want to turn them on and off, you can just use yeah. the switch, or if you have a remote control outlet, just power them from an outlet and then turn off that outlet. 
but they don't take AC themselves. They're five volt yeah. DC only. Someone wants to know: um, Are they uh, chewy or crunchy? Crunchy. They're um, crunchy. What flavor are they? I would say they take if these could, if you could eat these, these would taste like sweet tarts. All the different all the different flavors of sweet tarts or pixie yeah. sticks. They're so sweet. They don't they don't taste like schnozberries. No. Okay. In that movie, Demolition Man, they had rat burgers. Now I want a rat burger. And you'll understand why once you watch the movie. Because there was no cows. There are too many rats in New York, yeah. so I can understand. You could, you could eat rat burgers. Okay. okay. So anyways, um, let's, uh, let's end this. Uh, okay, we're almost done. Let's, no, we did. It's over. Oh. It's over. New products are over. I know. Light, light on the new products this week, Bam. but we had those through whole Neopixels.